Hi, this is Bart Polson, and what I'm doing in this video is I'm going over the 20 concepts curriculum that Cycling74 has on their web page to explain how to use Jitter, which is the video component of Max, MSP, and Jitter. I'm here in my beautiful uh, underground lair, and I'm going to go over their second lesson, which is Visi Part 2. And in it, I'm going to be using some of the Visi modules and hooking them up in uh, some of the ways of exploring with them. Now, what I have on this first video here is the grabber, which just turns on the eyesight camera on my computer. And down here is the is the viewer module. And I can get either one of those by right-clicking on my unlocked patch and going paste from PVR for a player, viewer, recorder, and, you know, there they both are. Um, but I can throw in some effects, too. So, for instance, um, I can just do this. Uh, by the way, in case you're wondering how to do this, I, I build the patch and then I delete stuff one at a time and I'm just hitting Control z to undo the deletes, which is why it just makes things a little faster. Uh, this one right here is a two-toner. And let me lock the patch for a minute and, you know, we can do lots of cool stuff with colors. All right, excellent. Um, but I can add some other stuff as well. I can also have, for instance, uh, the feeder, which is a way of getting feedback into the patch. You get some cool stuff with that one. Whoa, I'm, I'm totally hyped out there. Uh, you find with feedback, things tend to go to white really quickly. Let me try changing the two-tone setting up here, see if that makes a difference. Anyhow, use the feeder at your own uh, discretion. So. We've got these effects. We can add some others. So, for instance, I'll unlock the patch and I'll add uh, two others here. I've got the pixelator and the slider, both of which are fun, but I'm not going to connect them right now because what I want to do is see about the possibility of setting up independent video streams. And so, to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in this thing called the two switcher, which lets me take two separate video feeds, feed them into a single object, and then from there, decide which one I want to use. Um, so I got the two toner and the feeder going into video one in, and I've got the pixelator and slider going into video two in. And the selector here is just a slider that switches from one to the other. We got the slider on, so things are really slowed down over here. Okay, anyhow, there I am. And you can adjust the breakpoint if you want. So now it's going to be mostly this one if I slide it way down here. And, and the idea here is that I could hook up a, uh, an external knob or I could use a, a um, one of the, the Visi generators like the Twiddler to adjust these things automatically. Um, so let me just kind of turn off this effect for a moment. There we go. Theoretically, I have turned off the slider. I'm also going to turn off the pixelator. Cool. Um, anyhow, this is one way to do it. On the other hand, as they point out on the, uh, the 20 uh, Concepts website, this is inefficient because I'm actually doing the processing, all the processing in both streams, and it would be better, And I'm, but I'm only using one stream, it would be better instead of processing and then selecting one, would be to first select and then process, which is what we get to see in the next patch. Um, I'm just going to put this on pause, and I'll open up the second patch. Hi, I'm back with the second version of this. You can see it says uh, O2 Visi Part 2. Uh, the big difference here is that I've replaced the two router which took the uh, video feeds after they came through and picked one to feed through to the viewer. And this time I'm actually, um, I'm sorry, I, what I'm using now is the two router, which is where I have a single video feed coming in right here. You can see it on the screen. And then from there it selects it and sends it to one or two places depending on the selector right here. Now, right now, I'm running through video feed one, and I got both effects turned off. But if I turn the effects back on, you know, they look like this. Oops, turn that one off by accident. Okay, so there's my effect. And if I move the selector past the breakpoint, we turn on the second effect. Anyhow, um, that's one of the differences. And this is a more efficient one because the other effects are just uh, dormant when they're not being used. Uh, uses less... Um, computer power it makes it easier to run more effects um, and then we'll come back for part three of this particular lesson 
Okay, I'm back with part three and the patch looks a little bit different because I've gotten rid of some of the other effects. This part of the lesson is there to demonstrate the effect of some of the controllers, the clicker, the twister, and the fader. And I've got both of the effects turned off right now, but let me turn on the effects. I'm gonna turn on the two-toner, which we've had before. There we go. I'm gonna turn on the pixelator as well. So I got both of those on, but you see up here, I've got the clicker. And if I press the clicker, that can be used to switch the left. Oh, you can't tell what's going on here. Let me um, let me see if I can get a little bit more resolution. Okay, I'm pixelated, but not very much. If I hit the clicker, it's, it turns on the left-right um, reflection on the grabber module. Uh, the twister I can use to adjust uh, some of the um, continuous parameters. And I've got it feeding into both of them. So if I just hover over that, and I'm just dragging up and down after putting the mouse in there. Yeah, so that's adjusting the horizontal on the pixelator, and it's also adjusting the upper of the two tones. And then the fader is just another option. I can use that, and it adjusts a little differently. Anyhow, just some of the options available for controls. Also, um, I found that you can hook these up to an actual external hard uh, hardware controller I used a Korg Nano Control, but I've also got an APC 40 and 20 and a KMI Q Neo and stuff like that. You can hook them up and have them uh, link directly into the faders and the clickers as well. I'll show you a more in just a second in the uh, in the next patch that's in part of this curriculum. Okay, now I'm back with the next version of the um, the Visi Part Two lesson, and in this one, I've just got a bunch of clickers set up to turn things on and off. The first one we toggle the grabber and that just switches uh, which uh, let's see here oh that just turns it on and off so let's see here I toggle that anyhow um, it's that should be turning the grabber on and off oh well this next one here is to toggle on the two-toner and so I can turn oh now I'm in two-tone um, but I can also I'm gonna turn on the pixelator here because it's fun I can also toggle the red and the blue input uh, separately. You see, for instance, if I uh, hover over these. So this one will just, you know, just changes that one completely, or I can toggle the blue input, and I nearly disappear there. Anyhow, just some of the other control options, and we have one more patch to show in this particular lesson. In this last patch, I've uh, got just a few effects, the two-toner, as well as in the pixelator, which we've seen before, but I've also got the sketcher and the fogger, which do some pretty cool things. And I'm running them through the viewer, which we've seen, but I also have a recorder hooked up, which allows me to actually capture both still frames and video of what I've got right here. So I'm gonna come and turn on my effects. There's the two-toner, seen that before. Uh, the sketcher turns it into a, looks like a pencil sketch. And that I actually really like. I can. I'm just messing around with some of the presets here. Um, they're pretty convincing effects. I love how it works. Um, I can also take that and I can run it through the... Let me get a pretty clear one. I can run it through the pixelator. I can turn that on. Now i got a pixelated drawing. And then if I turn off the pixelator for a second, I can run through the fogger, which puts a um, sort of swirly set over it. Anyhow, I have the option of coming over here and recording. Just click on record and click on image to get the still sets. And if I go to my uh, little finder window here, you can see I've done that before and it saved it as a separate QuickTime movie and I got JPEGs of still frames from each of them. There's a still frame, there's a still frame, and there is a recording that I got from an earlier version of this. Anyhow, that is lesson two in uh, Cycling 74's 20 Concepts curriculum. This is Visi part two. I'll see you for part three.